Hi friends, now we will start discussion on the second part of this module energy production from algal biomass. In the first part we have discussed on biodiesel and bio oil production from algal biomass, different types of catalyst which can be used for the biodiesel production and their mechanism. And in this part we will discuss on the upgradation of algal oil to biodiesel using homogeneous and heterogeneous catalyst, we will giving some examples where this has been used. Then we will go for quality parameters of algal biodiesel and its stability issues and then we will give some challenges for microalgae and then biojet fuels and research status on the algae 2 oil. Now you see here some homogeneous catalyst have been used for the production of biodiesel from the bio oil produced from the microalgae, different types of microalgal strains have been used as mentioned here, different types of catalyst has been used, different lipid content of the algal biomass was reported and different biodiesel conversion was achieved. So, from this table we see all these informations are published in very recent years that is 2012, 13, 2007 etcetera. So, here we see the biodiesel conversion it is possible up to 98 percent here as reported by Lee et al, but in other, other cases it is 14.8 percent. So, there is wide variations of biodiesel productions depending upon the na name of the microalgae, depending upon the catalyst used and depending upon their lipid content etcetera. And the oil extraction methods are also different. Some other homogeneous catalyst reported are presented in this slide. Here also we get different types of microalgal strains, different types of oil extraction method like Soxlate apparatus, stirring extraction, subcritical ethanol extractions and microwave assisted transesterification this is another. So, here biodiesel conversion is also different. So, in this case 75 to say 96.5 percent are reported by different researchers. So, this is say homogeneous catalyst. So, here the conversion is considerable very good that is 80 percent, 90 percent, 75 percent etcetera. But the difficulty is that we have discussed using homogeneous catalyst the soap formation etcetera. So, to reduce this difficulty the people have developed some heterogeneous catalyst also. So, those heterogeneous catalyst have been used as reported here some of those are calcium oxide supported on Al2O3 and magnesium oxide supported on Al2O3 and magnesium zirconium solid based catalyst. So, these three catalyst we have reported in this slide. So, here we see different operating conditions are used temperature is almost 50 to 65 degree centigrade and here alcohol to oil ratio is 6 to 30 and catalyst load 2 percent to 10 percent and here reaction time is 4 hour. So, what important information we get here that the bio oil yield, biodiesel yield is not very high in this case say 16 percent, 28 percent and 23 percent except this case 97.5 percent which was achieved by using 80 percent CAO on al 3 So, in general the efficiency or the conversion of biodiesel through this heterogeneous catalyst is lower with respect to the homogeneous catalyst basically the base catalyzed reactions. Now, we will make some comparison between homogeneous versus heterogeneous catalyst for the transesterification reactions. So, we, we have identified some factors that is reaction rate post treatment step and then processing methodology, presence of water, fatty acids and catalyst use and cost. So, on the basis of these parameters we see the homogeneously catalyzed, catalyzed and heterogeneously catalyzed are having advantage and disadvantage in some cases. So, reaction rate obviously in this case fast and high conversions the homogeneous catalyst is very fast reactions, 
but this is moderate conversion that is why we got lesser conversions in this heterogeneous catalyst in the previous slide just we have discussed. And then what we will do with the catalyst in case of homogeneous reactions, homogeneous phase reactions? It is difficult to separate the catalyst from the media and it also creates some waste chemical. But in case of heterogeneous, we can remove the catalyst, we can regenerate it and reuse it. So, limited use of continuous methodology. So, continuous methods this is not very suitable, but this heterogeneous catalyst process, catalytic process is very very suitable for continuous operations using a fixed bed or fluidized bed or any other bed reactors. So, this method is sensitive, the homogeneous method is sensitive to water and free fatty acids, but this our heterogeneously catalyzed reactions is not sensitive to free fatty acids and water present in the oil sample. So, if we can get some more efficient catalyst, heterogeneous catalyst that may be the better option, because this is not dependent on the free fatty acids and water. And the at present the cost is this is comparatively costly and this is potentially cheaper one the heterogeneous. So, heterogeneous catalyst has good potential, but it requires further development in this area and extensive research is going on in this area for it their development. Now, we will see the quality of biodiesel, algal diesel and diesel oil and biodiesel A stem standard. If we compare, we see the biodiesel obtained from algal biomass matching the A stem biodiesel standards. Now, we will start to discuss on the stability of the algal biodiesel. So, stability biodiesel if we keep for a longer time it loses its properties. Because of the presence of double bond in the fatty acids or double bond in the esters, the oxidation takes place. So, this oxidation can be of primary oxidation and secondary oxidation. So, that is oxidation stability, the stability loss, loss of properties due to the presence of oxygen that is related to oxidation stability. Thermal stability is loss of properties due to thermal load and storage conditions also affect some stability of the biodiesel that is called storage stability. So, these three types of stability are important for the biodiesel and first we will discuss the oxidation stability. So, oxidation stability as you have discussed that it can be of primary or it can be of secondary. So, for the primary oxidation how it happens? For the primary oxidations there are three steps that is initiation, propagation and termination. And initiation of the oxidation takes place as per this reactions R H plus I is equal to R dash plus I H. So, what is I initiator? So, where from the initiator comes? Initiator is free radical which is produced by the decomposition of hydro peroxide present in the fat. And this hydro peroxide is basically produced due to the photo oxidation in the fat. So, once the initiator that initiator means OH radical. So, OH radical is produced. So, OH radical will react with RH. So, RH will give us R dot plus IH. So, what is R dot? R dot is your allyl radical and H dot which is produced or IH which we are getting that is your allyl hydrogen atom. So, these are the reactions. So, when we are getting R dot, so R dot R radical is reacting with oxygen and it is giving us R O O dot. So, what is R O O dot? This is equal to lipid peroxide radical. So, lipid peroxide radical is formed and lipid peroxide radical is again reacting with R H and giving us R O O H that is equal to lipid peroxide. So, R dot radical is again available, this R dot is not stable, R dot and R dot that react and gives us R R product or R O O dot 
R O dot reacts and gives them stable products. So, these are this type of reactions takes place when the oxygen is present basically the moisture and oxygen is present and the biodiesel is exposed to moisture and water and oxygen etcetera. And this radical formation is favored at high temperature and if metal contamination is there. So, this formation of radicals is favored. Now, we see what is this your allyl group. So, allyl group is C H double bond C H C H 2. If we have one C H 3 C H 2 C H C H C H 2 C O H like this. So, here this group is there. So, this is this hydrogen will be removed here. So, one hydrogen will be removed here and this radical will get this radical will get. So, this is the radical this is the radical which is given here R dash. So, this is the mechanism for the primary oxidation of the biodiesel. Then we will see the secondary oxidation. So, we have got the hydro hydro peroxides. So, hydro peroxides that is these things which we are getting here those will be further converted and decomposed to aldehyde. And as the hydro peroxides decompose oxidative linkage in the fatty acids in the fatty acid chains can occur to form species with higher molecular weight. So, higher molecular weight that means there are some oxidative polymerizations in the chain. So, oxidative poly polymerization resulting in an increase of viscosity of the oil. So, with time the biodiesel loses its properties and its viscosity increases. And increasing polyunsaturated fatty acid chains enhance the oxidative polymerizations in fatty oils resulting in formation of insolubles. So, these are the oxidation methods which take place in biodiesel and decreases its property. How to remove or how to stop this oxidation methods? Obviously, we can add some antioxidants. So, antioxidants are added to stop the process. When we are producing here, so ROH and R dust is again remaining. So, if we use some chemicals that can produce a stable radical or stable mighty as mentioned here. So, RO which is produced there, RO dot which is produced here, lipid peroxide radical. So, that lipid peroxide radical can react with AH some chemicals or antioxidants that will form ROH plus A dot. So, A dot is stable product. If A dot is stable product, then the further reaction will not proceed. So, the biodiesel degradation will not take place, the stability will retain. So, different types of antioxidants as additives have been added so both naturally as well as synthetic products. So, natural antioxidants are tocopherols, vitamin E, and synthetics are some examples are pyrogallal. Propyl gallate, butylated hydrooxyanisol, and butylated hydrooxytoluene, and tetrabutyl hydroquinone. So, these are some examples of the antioxidants used for the maintaining stability of the biodiesel. Now, we will see some challenges for microalgal species or microalgae to biodiesel production. There are a number of challenges. In the previous module, we have discussed that all microalgae is not having equal amount of or higher amount of lipid. Only few species are having higher amount of lipid. So, we have to identify and we have to monitor, we have to develop some technology so that the microalgae can improve or produce more amount of lipid in their cell. That is one challenge. So, genetic modifications or other stress etcetera. So, we have to do 
some development on this. Another major challenge is in algae culture is to design a cost effective photobioreactor. So, photobioreactors are not cost effective, it is costly affairs. So, we have to design some photobioreactor which is economically feasible and extraction of microalgae that is harvesting and it is again for oil production it requires drying. So, these steps are very uh, expensive and not economic. So, these are the challenge we have to develop alternate routes to reduce the expenditure in this step. And although these are the major disadvantage or the challenges for the algae to oil conversion, but it has some positive sides also and biodiesel from microalgae looms as the only renewable biofuel that can substitute petrodiesel completely as per these references. So, considering the challenges, the people are trying to integrate different activities and to develop an integrated approach. Say, we are not only interested to get the lipid from the microalgae, once we are getting the lipid, we will be produce, producing the biodiesel from it, then the rest part of the biomass, which is, which is not having lipid, will be having carbohydrate or protein etcetera those can be used for other applications for biogas productions or say lipid extractions people are trying to get the protein first then they are going to extract lipid and then the carbohydrate and one example of the integration is shown here that when algal cultivation is going on so algal cultivation can be used for bio oil or biodiesel production this can be used for biogas plant that is the anaerobic digestion biogas production and after oil or extraction, the oil extracted biomass can be sent to biogas plant also. After biogas production, again we will having some sludge. So, that sludge can be used for composting plant, for thermal treatment etcetera. So, through thermal treatment also we can get from energy from this material which is remaining after biogasification of this material. So, that way the whole process can be integrated and this approach if we can use then this may improve the economy of the process. Now, we will discuss the bio jet fuel productions. So, what is bio jet fuel? So, jet fuel which is used in jet engines. So, that can be of commercial jet fuel or it can be of military jet fuel. So, there is slight difference between commercial jet fuel and military jet fuel. Basically, military jet fuel contains more corrosion inhibitor and anti-icing additives. So, commercial jet fuels are basically four types as given here type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. Type 1 jet fuel its flash point is around 38 degree centigrade and freezing point is minus 47 degree centigrade. So, these are two major parameter which differentiate different types of jet fuels. So, for type 2 this flash point is 30 degree centigrade, but freezing point is minus 40 degree centigrade. Type 3 T S 1 the flash point is lower that is 28 degree centigrade minimum that is type 4 and jet B this is having minus 50 degree centigrade of freezing point. So, the freezing point and flash point are varying with the different type of this jet fuel used in commercial scale or in civil aviation, but all those are of kerosene type of fuel and for military jet fuel we are having basically type 1, type 2 and type 3. So, type 1 is nothing, but it is a jet B, jet B for civil or commercial jet fuel which we have jet B this type that is minus 50 degree centigrade with addition of corrosion inhibitor and anti-icing additives. Similarly, type 3 JP8 this is jet A1. So, that is jet A1 type of fuel with some more additives for anti-icing and corrosion inhibition. So, these are the type of jet fuels which are used 
in jet engine. Now people are trying to get the jet fuel also and US army, US military is actually funding some projects for the production of this biojet fuel. So biojet fuel can be produced by basically two routes. The first route is biodiesel production and make some blend with the jet fuel and then we will get the biojet fuel. So already we have discussed all these methods. So this is one route one. Another route is there we can get algal biomass after harvesting and then algal biomass can be processed through thermolysis or pyrolysis and then we will get some oleum, bio oleum so that bio oleum further be upgraded but this upgradation is not trans esterification it is hydrogenation. So hydrogenation or other methods can be used for the upgradation in spite trans esterification and so biojet fuel can be obtained. So these are two basic routes people are investing for the development of biojet fuel from the microalgal biomass. Now we will see some research status. So different universities and organizations are involved for the development of new techniques in different aspects or different area for the biodiesel or jet fuel or any fuel production from algal biomass. Some examples are given here. So Iowa State University in 2016 it is reported that they are involved on cost effective harvesting of microalgal cells. Similarly, Murdoch University they are involved in the industrial production of oil and carotenoids from microalgae, efficient use of solar energy by microalgae and sponge algae interaction. Similarly, University of Texas they are involved on extraction of oil and other high value products from algae. So CFTRI, so they are involved in enhancing lipid accumulations in microalgae, isolations and characterization of native microalgae. KIST that is Korean Institute of Science and Technology, Korea, they are developing they are using genome editing techniques for increased biofuel production from microalgae and IIT Roorkee are developing biofuel and genetic modification of the microalgae. Monash University is involved in biodemediations and biofuel productions by algae, IIT Kharagpur increasing biofuel productions from microalgae and these are two company they are involved Selena are involved in developing biodiesel production system from microalgae and alginol they are, they are developing cost effective ethanol production from microalgae. Some other industries which are involved for the development of technology are provided here we see they are located in different countries USA, Spain, India etc. So their products are different but biodiesel products of biofuels crude oil from algae from somewhere biofuel etc. And this is the capacity that is sapphire energy USA that is capacity is 100 barrels per day in 2012 crude oil from algae and this is 5000 barrels per day and in India that is reliance industry they are proposing to produce 66,800 barrels per day biofuels in as per a report in 2015 but when they will produce this this is not clear. So after this in this module and with this module we are also at the end of the course and best wishes to all of you who will be opting for the examination for getting certificate thank you very much.